Thank you very much. Let me, first of all, recognize in our presence our, our President, His Excellency Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, the Honorable Reginald Austri, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Agriculture, my Cabinet colleagues present, Honorable Johnson Drago, our Member of Parliament for the Castlebridge constituency, Father Tarimo, our parish priest, the chairperson and members of the councils of both communities, Mr. Christopher Timmins of Montreal Management, and also the staff of MC present here. And to all of you, the, of course, my permanent secretary and the staff of the Ministry of Housing, and all of you present here this afternoon, and those listening via live broadcast of this ceremony. I am very happy for the many beneficiaries of these residencies. We all have recognized that this part of Dominica is a very vulnerable part of the country. And therefore, in responding to the effects of climate change, it is important that we not only build back better, but build in safer areas and safer locations and ensure that in the event of a similar disaster, similar hurricane, all residents, all families can feel safe in remaining in their homes, knowing that the homes were constructed uh, utilizing all of the technology and the recognition of the categories of hurricane which we um, experienced and we've experienced last year. So these homes are being constructed with these things in mind to ensure the safety of the residents. Some people have asked, why are we doing apartments in Dominica, for example? Now, yes, we might be one of the largest islands in the Caribbean, but we have less land to build than any other island in the Caribbean because of the mountains and our uh, vulnerabilities to, flood, to, to um, erosion and mudslides. And therefore, in San Sofer and in Cassibrus, when those of us who know these areas very well, we have but very limited space to build homes for so many families. As a matter of fact, in San Sofer, we've had to purchase, acquire lands to build these homes. And in Cassibrus, while Cassibrus might be a large village, but Cassibrus and the soil type is susceptible to erosion. And with a, a structures like this, um, you are unable to put it on slope, sloping lands or lands that are close to rivers or ravines and, 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 and so forth. And you also have to look at issues of liquid waste and issues of parking for um, the owners of the residences. But for me, one of the more fundamental points of why it's important for us to utilize as, as less land space as possible for residences is that we have to very seriously look at the gradual use, and it's also in a very fast manner, of agricultural lands for housing. Because if we keep using all of the agricultural lands for housing, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. To resettle the residents of Pitit Savan, we've had to acquire about 50 acres of land. 50 acres of land we've had to acquire to build these residence, residences for the people of Pitit Savan. Now, how many parts of Dominica you can really get 50 acres of land to build homes like this? And so we have to look at these things in a very objective and serious manner and to appreciate what the government is doing for the people. We want to place on public record our appreciation to Dr. Anthony Hayden and the folks at MMC for your commitment and your dedication to our country and your willingness to partner with us um, in the area of housing. And we're very pleased with that partnership which we have engendered and look forward to Greater things. Because 
after the hurricane, you know, we, all of our homes were affected. You know, many of our homes were, were crushed to the ground. And the government felt that it had to respond very quickly to this disaster. So while many of us, or most of us, if not all of us, were involved in relief, the government had moved into gear of recovery and rebuilding very early after the hurricane. Very early after the hurricane. So all of this you've seen, all of these designs, all of this identification of the, of the locations, the sites for these homes, all of the um, studies and tests that were done, were done after the hurricane. All of this is a conceptualized after the hurricane. So it tells you the speed at which the government moved in doing all of these things. And so these contracts we're talking about, these homes we're talking about, are not homes where we, we intend to sign contracts. These contracts have been signed. And contractors have been mobilized to begin construction of these apartments. So in the in the east, the Castle Bruce, the San Sauve, the Grand Fond, the La Plaine, the Dailies, you'll be receiving 330 residences in those communities. So next year, 330 families will be will no longer be in a vulnerable state because of the government's intervention. And in addition to that, in the east, we have assigned 200 homes for the Salibia constituency to provide homes for the residents of the Carnegie Territory and at Kinson. And contracts have been signed for these 200 homes. So you're talking about just in these communities in excess of 522 residences. Tomorrow, we go to Portsmouth to have a similar ceremony like this today, where we'll be launching a major project for the people of Portsmouth and indeed the whole North, where we will launch some 226 residences. In that area, we'll build a new police station, a new fire station. We will build a government complex, and we will have a theater slash resource center that will serve as a hurricane shelter for the Portsmouth catchment area. Because we will not have money to build purpose-type hurricane shelters in every village. And therefore, we have to look at regional centers uh, to provide shelter for our, res our citizens and residents in the time of need. But in the first phase in Portsmouth, we will be building 68 units, and contracts have been signed for these 58 units, 68 units. And those of us who know Dominica know Portsmouth well in the, in the, in the community of Lago, and there's a section of Lago called Cotton Hill. The government there will be building some 68 units, and contracts have been signed for the 68 units in Lago. So we'll be, ha we'll be having a joint ceremony tomorrow between Lago and Portsmouth uh, tomorrow afternoon at 5.30. And we could have gone to Massac and St. Joseph next week, but I'll be out next week. So we'll go the following week, God's willing, where we'll, we'll also launch some 43 residences in Hillsborough Garden in St. Joseph. And another 33 in Massac for the residents of the Mao constituency. And this will not be the only number we'll build in the Massac and, and, and Mao and St. Joseph. It is just a start. So we are well on our way to addressing the housing situation. And when we spoke and we you hear us speak about building a, clim a first climate resilient nation, we're not only talking about the physical infrastructure. We're talking about the human aspect of our society, ensuring that the human beings, people, can be provided with sustainable livelihoods and also 
be protected from the ravages and from the impacts of disasters. And so we give you the assurance with the help of God that if a hurricane were to come, God forbid, when you're in those homes, all you have to do is roll your rosary, those of us who are Catholics, yeah. and we can pray, and the hurricane will pass us through safe and sound in his homes. And I am, I, I wish to caution all of us here that we have to be careful about false prophets. Both religious and political false prophets. Because there are a lot of political false prophets who will come to these parts and promise you this and promise you that. And who, whose mission it is to criticize everything they say they see that's good. But those of us who are Christians know that the Bible speaks very clearly about being grateful, be showing gratitude. Amen. So we can't say that we are Christians and then not follow the dictates of the Bible. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, but he loves someone who shows gratitude. And therefore, we have to ensure that those who come here to us and cannot offer us biscuit must not seek to take the bread from our mouths. So if people want to replace this party from government, they must come with concrete plans, with where show us where the money is in the bank to do the things they say they want to do for us in Dominica. Because every time, every time when this Labour Party comes to these communities, we don't only speak about things, we show you that we are doing things for you, the people of this country. And in life, my friends, we should not, is this, life is too serious. And the governance of a country is too serious a matter for there to be game play. This is about not only our well-being, but the well-being and the future of our children. Because yes. every one of us in here who have children are already leaving for our children. We work hard not for ourselves, but for our children. And therefore, the decisions that we take and make we must always bear in mind the implications for children. So those who want to come here and say what they will do, what they want to write, anybody can write anything on a paper. Anybody can draw anything on a paper. Anybody can plagiarize anything they see elsewhere. And, but when it comes to the hard work, when it comes to sitting down and putting plans together, they are nowhere to be seen. And in a post maria situation, when the country requires the understanding, the support, the commitment, expression of love and concern for our country, there are some whose mission it is to seek to undermine our rebuilding efforts. But I warn you, my dear Dominicans, do not get misguided to think that when attacks on the countries, on our country's level, it is about Roosevelt's carrot. Because the truth be told, I may be the least affected when things go wrong. When these people are attacking this country and undermining our efforts at rebuilding, they are undermining your individual and family efforts at making life better for yourself. Because you know 
better than me. That if it is not for the government's intervention in fixing homes for people, in building homes for people, the majority of us would not have the resources to do that. And you are older than me, many of you are older than me here, and therefore you have a more vivid recollection of contemporary and historical facts in our country. It is not the first time we've had disasters in Dominica. But the records will show that it is only this government, this party, that has reached out to people in that manner after a hurricane was yeah. So if you have a government, if you have a party that is working for you, I mean, let us face it, you don't go divorcing your husband or your wife because you've been together for too long. You celebrate the years. You celebrate the years. The silver jubilee. The golden jubilee. And then there are times things may not be working well and so on. Or at a particular point, especially at the silver jubilee, you renew the vows. You go to the church and the priest and the pastor and you say, Father, look, you know, things are going well. You just want to renew the commitment. So when people talk about, oh, they were there for too long, it's time for change. But change to what? Change for what? You can't take out a working government, and I am saying so with great humility, a working prime minister, and put lazy people inside. And there has been no prime minister, including our faithful Rosie Douglas, who has sat down in villages, sitting down for hours, listening to people one by one. And genuinely listening to them, listening to their concerns, their suggestions, their ideas, their dreams, and their aspirations and to see how we can work together to make life better for them and to create a better future for the children. So I am very happy for you, the potential beneficiaries. Because for me personally, and for the Labour Party, based on its founding principles, what we want for our children, we want the same for you. And what we did not have growing up, we wanted for your children. And every policy and every program we have implemented are guided by our principles, but also guided by our own life experiences. Today, we just handed over a check of over a million dollars to the state college to pay the fees for your children your children, so that they don't, they, you don't have the headache of having to fetch money. Because I was speaking to students eh, this morning in smaller groups. And in some cases, these students have to come up with $23 per day for transportation. Now, I know families in Good Hope and San Sauve and Pretty Sufre and Morpo and Deepa and Cassie Bruce and all of the hamlets in Cassie Bruce. I cannot think of any one of us who have that kind of money who can give two children $23 each every day for school. Plus snacks. And this train these days is KFC they want to go to. So how many of us can really give our children $50 every day for school? And you know, what is sad about all of this 
is that when we made the announcement to provide transportation allowance for the students in the sum of $300,000 and pay the fees as of May 31, 2018 for every student attending the state college, the 1,800 of them and those who left and left a bill behind, and we hear the opposition criticizing that. Criticizing that, I mean, I mean, how can you criticize a government's investment in our youth? How can you criticize a government's investment in the future of Dominica? How can you criticize a government's investment in education? It tells you, my dear brothers and sisters, that these people care about no one but themselves. So the house cover, two pull to the rest of us who do not have a roof over our heads. The children in the school, they don't care who else is out of school. And that is not what leaders are supposed to do. You know, if we look at the Bible, the shepherd had, was it a hundred? hundred, right? A hundred sheep? A hundred. And one went astray. And he went looking for that one ship. Some of us may look at this in a, from a parable standpoint, but it tells you that everyone is important. Everyone is important. And therefore, we have to look out for everyone. And it's not because he, well, some people say, well, I say, well this man is greedy, this, this um, shepherd is greedy. He has 99, and you're going to look for one. So it is in that context, I also say to you, that I don't mind getting 21 seats. I mean, because an opposition is important, but in so far as they're doing their work, in so far as they're serious about representing people, in so far as they are serious about Dominica. But I have not met one opposition member, and the only one who showed some interest had put up his flag and said, gentlemen, I'm leaving you guys. You guys are a waste of time. Let me go and join a working government. Yeah. And mark you, my friends, I'm not here. This is not talking politics. Eh? This is about speaking about real situations and to draw to your consciousness the need for you to be careful. But I'm very happy here. I want to thank the Permanent Secretary and his staff for the, for the work. Uh, Mr. Marcus Lestrade, of the, the Chief um, um, Surveyor, we, we, you know, we've been doing a fantastic job in helping to survey all of the plots. I want to thank all of the private property owners who have agreed to sell the lots. And I want all of us in Good Hope and Peter Souffre and San Sauvet to be grateful to Mr. Schillingford for agreeing to, agreeing to sell his land in San Sauvet to us to build homes for you. And I want to thank all of you and to say that next year, next year, in this constituency, we will have 122 families. And this is just one component of the housing program. I met many families in Good Hope today and from Pity Sufre and San Sobe, who have their individual lots, whose homes were affected. And I give you the assurance, my friends, that we will build those homes for you and we'll start as soon as possible on your own private homes, those of you who do private lots, those of you who have your private lots. So we're committed to that. So we look forward to working with you. Um, as, the, as the project goes on, we will bring you to visit and to appreciate what's taking place and, and how things are taking place. It's important for you to avail yourselves uh, for jobs. It's a good opportunity for us to have <clears throat> some um, catering around so that workers there can buy from you. So we, we can appreciate the, the kind of economic activity these apartments, the construction of these apartments will have on the communities. So please take advantage of it. Please take advantage of the opportunities. Let us work together. Let us work together to make life better for all of us. Everything is not perfect. <clears throat> Nothing is perfect. But 
we can all agree that yesterday is certainly better than yesterday. And we must be grateful to the good Lord for that because things could be worse. Because in many countries where hurricanes have affected them and where they have a godfather and a godmother to help them, we don't have any godmother, godfather, you know. We have people helping us, but we are largely on our own because those who are helping us have no obligation to help us. And therefore, we are largely on our own. So things will always be perfect, but by being positive and being, being constructively um, critical will help in the process of making life better for all of us. And it is important for us to be positive in our views, positive in our outlook, and positive in our expressions. So I urge us, my friends, that life may not be perfect for all of us, but do not look at the glass half empty. Look at it as half full. And by doing so, we can certainly move Dominica to becoming the world's first climate resilient nation and make life better for all of us. I wish you all the best and God's blessing to all your families and yourselves and to these constituencies and to our country, Dominica. Thank you very much.